what's going on YouTube West Hobbies RC so today we are back with the SAB raw 420 build part two so in the last video we got the frame sides battery lad, battery slides the motor mounted tail pulley servos top transmission assembly tail mounts and tensioner set so now we are going to start on the head. So let's get everything we need out of the bag and let's get the so build. The first thing we are gonna go ahead and do is our radius arm assembly. Now we have all of our bearings or we have flanged bearings and our metal radius arms. So we need some retaining compound, green retaining compound. You're going to put a dab of retaining compound on your bearings. And then you're just gonna go ahead and slide them through, give them a little twist. And you're going to do this for all of the bearings so you're going to get two per side you're going to come back through with the rubbing alcohol and paper towel clean your arms off so you're going to go ahead do this for both arms two per side make sure you use retaining compound so now that we went ahead got all of our bearings in on both arms we're going to take our arm little side facing down we are going to insert a screw through the back side just like this one and a half millimeter driver you're gonna take this little tiny spacer washer, slide that guy onto there like this, and then you're gonna take your plastic radius arm and you are going to thread that guy into there. Now be very careful when doing this because number one, it's plastic. Number two, you don't wanna go in cross thread. So do your best to go in as straight as possible and be careful when you're tightening these down, don't crank them because you still want it to move freely. So we have no play, but we have a free moving arm. So now you do your other one. So now that we went ahead and did both of our radius arms, they are free and no play. Now we can move on to the actual linkage rods. So now if you look at these linkage rods very carefully, there is a hole right in there and it is for a 0.9 Allen. So you can take a 0.9 Allen, it'll fit into there, you can take your ball end and you can get it started. And this will be an easy, quick way to make the rod up. And then you're gonna want an overall diameter of 44 millimeters. So from end to end, 44 millimeters. Go ahead and make, make both of those up and we can go on to the head now block. We went ahead and made our Linkages up there at 44 millimeters Our radius arms are done next step is the head block itself So you're going to open your head block You're going to have your o-rings and you're going to have your dampeners your hard dampeners and your o-rings very simple head Very very easy. So I'm going to use a little bit of micro lube on my finger Just a little bit. You don't need a lot and just like the big sab builds. We're going to lube up these o-rings And we're going to insert one into the head Get a little bit of micro lube on the dampener, insert it into the head. Same on this side. Get a little bit of micro lube all over those o ring. Oh, that o ring, there's only one. Same with the dampener. And now we can go ahead, put a tiny bit of micro lube on the actual shaft. We don't need a lot, just a little, little bit. And then we can insert the shaft, very, very simple head design, very easy. And then now our main shaft is through our head block. And then we'll put a little bit more micro lube before we insert the actual blade grips. And then you could also put a little bit down in there to help, but now we can move on to the blade grip assembly. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and assemble the blade grip bearings, assembling the thrust bearings. So I already went ahead and pre-loaded my thrust bearings themselves. And what I mean by pre-load is I mean I take a little bit of micro lube and I will pack the inside of the bearings full of grease. Also, go ahead and check. You need a smaller ID and a larger ID. They're two different sizes. You will notice that in the manual, you want smaller ID, then thrust bearing, and then larger ID, and then your copper shim. So I already went ahead and checked for that. So we're going to go ahead and assemble this. And I'm going to assemble the bearings like I would with the bolt. So the head of my driver is going to be the bolt. And we're going to go ahead and go smaller ID. And then we're going to take our thrust bearing. And we want open side towards the actual head block. Closed side towards the actual blade grip bolt. Larger ID. 
and then our little copper shim. And then we're just going to grab this whole assembly, pick it up, kind of wiggle it up and drop it down into the blade grip. And then gently, carefully push it down, kind of maneuver it into place. And then you're going to do the exact same on the other blade grip. All right, now we got our head block here with our feathering shaft. I already went ahead and used a little bit of micro lube on the feathering shaft. So now we are ready to install our blade grips onto the feathering shaft. I already got the blade grip bolts ready with Loctite already done on them. So we could go ahead and get this unit assembled together. If I sound a little funny, it's because I'm getting over being sick. So that's why. But we're going to take our blade grip. And now SAB recommends to assemble the head without any shims in between the blade grip itself and the head block. They say after 20 to 30 flights, check for head play. If there is any head play, add one shim. So we're gonna assemble with no shims. So we're gonna slide this together just like that, nice and perfect. We are going to take our feathering shaft bolt is a two and a half millimeter driver. Already put Loctite on the actual bolt itself. We are going to go ahead and spin this guy down. And then we're gonna grab our next blade grip and we are going to slide it through like so. I'm gonna take our next bolt, Loctite already on there. And spin it down. And now we're gonna to torque this all the way down. We're gonna check for play, check for tightness, see how it feels. Go ahead and make sure we got a good tightness. There we go. So now our blade grips are a little tight, but smooth. And they will wear in after a few flights. So it is normal for them to be a little tight, but they want them to be smooth. You don't want gritty or anything like that. So now our head is assembled. So now we need to add the ball link to our blade grip arm. Now these blade grip arms are a carbon composite plastic. So they are sacrificial. They are designed to break away in a crash. So one and a half millimeter driver, you are going to just thread your ball links in, go ahead and run them all the way down. No Loctite or anything is needed. If you want to, you could always add a little dab of medium CA is a, is like a little type of Loctite for your plastic arm. So go ahead, do the other one and we can move on. All right, so now we're gonna take our blade grip arm and we need to bolt it on to the blade grip. So it's going to be a two and a half millimeter driver you need to lock tight your screw, of course. We're gonna go ahead and run that down, get it started. Once we get it started, we can fully tighten it all the way up. Blue lock tight, of course, tighten it down, do the same on the other side. So now we're gonna do our radius arms. So if you notice, there is a little lip right there. That little lip needs to ride on the actual bearing itself. So you'll notice this little lip rides on this bearing and you want your SAB logo to be facing out, of course. So we're gonna go ahead and take our one and a half millimeter driver with our M2 by 10 screw. Go ahead, get that line. And then you can go ahead and do the exact same on the other side, tighten these all the way down. And then your radius arms will be completed like this. Make sure it is free and smooth once you tighten them all the way down, no binding. Go ahead, do the same on the other side, and then we can put the links on. So now that we got our radius arms on, SAB logo facing out, that is important to make sure that the ball direction is correct. You're gonna grab your links, and again, SAB logo facing out, go ahead and pop them on each side. So one and two. And then now we can grab the swash plate, get those balls done and move on to mounting the head. Okay, I went ahead and put the balls on the actual swash plate. It's self-explanatory. One and a half millimeter driver, Loctite, put all your balls on. I'd recommend not putting the anti-rotation pin on yet until we get it installed on the actual helicopter. So I already went ahead, used my micro lube, lubed up my swash plate in my, or my shaft. And then now I'm going to take my actual anti-rotation pin. I'm going to put a dab of Loctite on it. And then I'm going to insert the anti-rotation pin through here, kind of line this guy up like this can be a little tricky. Get it started with my fingers and then come back through with a small flat headed screwdriver and just tighten this pin up. So now we are tightened up. Now our swash plate is installed. Now we're gonna take our head itself and we are going to slide the 
actual head down onto the main shaft. We need to line up the actual bolt hole. So line that guy up. Take our bolt, which is going to be a two and a half millimeter driver. And there is a nut to go on the back side. So once we can get the bolt to go through the hole, in, we can put the nut on the back side, let it go into its holder. Go ahead and tighten this all the way down. Radius arms are gonna go on to this side of the swash plate, just like this. And then our actual blade grip arms they're gonna go on to this end of the swash plate, but again, make sure SAB is facing out. So we're gonna make sure we look and turn 180 to the left, pop, and then do the same on this side. We need to make sure we turn 180 to the left, pop this link on, and then now our swash plate is connected. Everything is free and smooth. Now we can move on to making the push rods. So now our next step is going to be doing the linkage rod. So these are gonna be going from your servo to your swash plate. So again, we need a 0.9 millimeter driver. Now, if you notice again on the same ball in or threaded rods, you have a Allen and it's for a 0.9 millimeter driver. So we're gonna go ahead and grab one end and then just simply screw this all the way in. Now pay attention to this little hole right here and that's gonna judge about how far we have the actual rod inserted into the end. We want it to be about halfway through the actual end there. We wanna see about halfway. So about right there. And then we can remove our driver. And then we know when we go to screw this in, we're gonna be about halfway as well. So let's go ahead and start this one and then run it all the way down. So now we got one finished and you can see they're about equal on the thread sticking in each side. Now you want a total distance of 41 to 42 millimeters from end to end. So go ahead and measure that up. Once you complete one, build your other two. Okay, so we are going to install our linkages. Now I already went ahead and I made all my linkage rods to 41.22 millimeters to be exact. They can be anywhere from 41 to 42 millimeters. By the time I was done adjusting, all my linkages came out to 41.22. So I am happy with that. So you're gonna have one, which is going to be your elevator. That's gonna be 180 flip of each other. So basically this one, SAB, SAB 180 flip. So we're gonna pop the one on the servo link, pop that guy onto there, and then SAB is facing out. And then we're gonna pop it on the swash plate, SAB facing out. Now, now the same on this side, I already pre-made these up. So this one is for the other side. And this one is for this side. So SAB facing out and SAB is gonna be facing out. Now, the reason I keep saying SAB facing out is because on all ball links, you will have the logo will be the outside faces because basically the way that the link is designed that the ball size is that if you try to put it on the other way, it'll be next to impossible. And if you do get it to pop on, it'll be extremely tight and you risk it popping off. So now the same thing with this one, pop it on, pop it on. And now all of our linkages, push rods are hooked up and now we're ready to move on. So now we're gonna get started on the tail assembly. So we have everything out of the bags. We have our tail shaft sitting here with the feathering shaft and some O-rings. So the first thing we are going to do is get a little bit of micro lube on our finger. And we are just going to give a little bit of lube onto the o-rings and we're going to insert the o-ring into this side and then again a little bit of micro lube onto the o-ring give it a good wipe around and insert it onto this side and you can use a little driver to help get any micro lube out of that hole there we're going to take our feathering shaft here and we are going to slide it through very easy very simple we're gonna take one little washer, slide it down, the other little washer, and slide it down. And now we're gonna go ahead and install the actual thrust bearings into the tail grip. So now I'm going to install this again like this was the head of the bolt. So we're gonna use a smaller ID with the groove side, flat side facing the head of the bolt. 
groove side up and then we're going to take our thrust bearing that I've already preloaded with grease. Open side is going to face out so it'll be closed side towards the head of the bolt so you'll have the open side and then your larger ID. So that'll sandwich together and then your little copper washer and then that whole stack will drop right down into your blade grip just like that and then you are going to take your blade grip bolt with a washer so it'll look like this you're going to grab your tail shaft and we are going to slide this whole unit down and then we are going to slide our bolt through tighten it all the way up and then you're going to do the exact same on the other side okay so next is going to be our pitch slider so if you notice on our pitch slider you bolt you both sides are countersunk on this side and both sides are threaded on this side but you will notice that the actual pitch arm is has an s on this side and no s on this side so the s is the direction of them so that does make a difference so we're going to go ahead and slide this guy into here and run our screw down so tighten this guy all the way up and again we are using retaining compound so now that's nice and tight so now we need to pay attention to the direction now that we have an s over here we need to flip this 180 so the S is on this side. So go ahead, repeat the same process, put your little insert, screw it down, just make sure your S's are on opposite directions of each other. And so now that we are done with this one, again, S and S opposite of each other, I already put micro lube on the shaft. So we are just gonna simply slide this through here and we are going to put the S facing out. So on this side, S is gonna clip onto here and on this side, the S of the label will clip onto here. Just like that, nice and free. So now our tail grip assembly is done and now we can move now on. We're gonna get started on the tail casing assembly. So I already went ahead, got everything out, out of the vids bags. I'm going to grab the little tail casing lip and we're going to insert it into this little groove right here. We want the lip side facing down. So it's gonna sit into here just like this and then you will insert your screws through the back side. So it'll be a one and a half millimeter driver, blue Loctite of course, go ahead, get one started, run it all the way down, tighten it up, and then run your second one in right there. So then we're just gonna go ahead, I already put the vinyl decal on the actual tail fin, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get that put on there. So it's just a two millimeter driver, Loctite, you're gonna put one screw here, and the other screw right there. So now we're going to assemble the actual bell crank itself. So now this bell crank is going to go into the model this way. So we're just gonna go ahead and assemble it partially before we assemble onto the tail casing. So we need some retaining compound on the smaller Allen screw, one and a half millimeter driver. And we are going to insert through that lip side. So it goes screws down here. Then we're going to take this little ball link, thread that guy on, and that will be a two millimeter driver with retaining compound. Go ahead, tighten that up. Then grab one of your flanged bearings, go ahead, pop it into place. Then you want to grab this little brass bushing, drop it down, grab your next flanged bearing carefully get it put into place once you get it popped into place you can use a small driver to help align that actual bushing up. grab your tail casing now grab your bell crank it is going to go down into here like this so now we are going to make sure that that bushing is lined up and then we're going to grab make sure your lip side is down a two millimeter driver retaining compound go ahead and run that screw all the way down, tighten it up. It should be moving freely. So next thing we're gonna need to do is grab our tail belt itself. We're gonna wanna slide this through here. So we have our belt opening, grab your pulley. 
Now remember, you want the actual side that has your screw to be on the side with the fin. So we're gonna put it in this way. So that way you can have your screw hole, your grub screw hole on that side. So then we're gonna just pull the belt there. We're going to slide this whole shaft into here. Now remember, you notice there's a little flat spot right here. We want that little flat spot slash keyway to line up with our grub screw. So you can look, spin this guy around until you find it. So there you go, right there. You see it right there. So we're gonna take a one and a half millimeter driver with our grub screw already have Loctite on it. We're gonna run that down. And then now we wanna not get it completely tight yet, let it loose and we can wiggle this back and forth and we know that we are in that little keyway. And then we wanna crank that down, not super tight. And then you're gonna grab these little pins that are gonna be a one and a half millimeter driver. And then you're just simply going to run that pin down just like this. And there's gonna be one on the top and one on the bottom, and then one right down Now there. your tail casing should look like this. Everything should be free and smooth. So everything is nice and smooth, no grit, no binding, perfect range all the way across. And now we can grab the tail so You're boom. gonna grab your boom and you're going to install this about 200 millimeters from the edge. So it equaled about right at the eye on mine, but yours might be a little different depending on how your sticker was placed. So just measure 200 millimeters from this back hole to here. So then we're gonna grab our belt and we are going to slip the belt all the way through. Once it comes out the other end, pull it. And then you're going to just simply slide this into here, line your holes up. It's a two millimeter driver, Loctite. Run your screw down. Go ahead, do the same on this side. Two millimeter driver, Loctite. Run your screw down. Just like that. And then now our tail casing is on the boom. Our belt is all the way through. And then we can do the tail now servo. Now it's time to do the tail servo. So I already went ahead and I centered my servo and I installed my servo horn. Now they tell you in the manual that you want 13 to 15 millimeters from center point to center point from the center of the servo horn to the uh, ball link. So I'm right at 13 millimeters. The next hole was like almost 16. So I figured this was the best bet. So you just want 13 to 15 millimeters from the center to the center. So I already went ahead and did that. Now on the torque servos, we're gonna use these little torque servo grommets. So go ahead and insert those into here like that. And then on your mount itself is going to install this way. So this servo is gonna slide down here like this. We want the, this side is gonna bolt to the helicopter, this side away from the helicopter. So I already went ahead and Loctited my screws. So I'm going to drop my screws with the carbon fiber plate down here like that. Grab my two millimeter driver and get this screw started. Get my second one started before I go ahead and tighten these guys down. I'm just going to do the exact same here and then go ahead and tighten all of these down. Just like that. And then we can mount this whole tail servo assembly into the helicopter. So the tail servo itself is going to slide down here. So it's gonna go into this hole and this hole. So go ahead and hold that there and get your screw ready with Loctite and get that screw started. run that screw all the way down and then put your next screw in right so once there. you get your screws tightened down it'll look like this so now we can right. move on so now we are going to go ahead and install our boom clamp so now this is going to be the front boom clamp now if you notice here you have threaded holes and non-threaded we're going to be using the non-threaded because the actual boom clamp itself is threaded so this first one that's going to go in here, it's going to go through here with this groove cutout. 
It's gonna go on this side. So we're gonna go through the non-threaded hole, slide it through, tighten it down. Okay, grab your next screw, lock tight, and then also pay attention to which way your actual screws are. So we want our boom clamp screws to be on the left side of the model. So then we're gonna take our front clamp, we're gonna slide that guy through here, tighten this down, and then you're gonna add your screw here and your screw you're gonna here. get this really long screw. And what this is for is you're gonna grab your tensioner and you are just going to simply use that to pin your tensioner out of the way. And now we're gonna grab our boom and we're gonna grab our belt and we need to pay attention to the twist of the belt. So we need to pull the belt and twist it to the right to make sure that our twist is the proper way. So now we are going to carefully insert our belt with our right twist to it. And we're going to slide that guy in here, reaching through, pulling the belt through at the same time. Now you can add a little bit of grease on to this little rubber ring here to help you for the tail boom, but it's not needed. It's sliding through pretty good. So then we're just gonna carefully push the whole boom assembly into place and it'll line up into that front pin right there. It'll just kind of push into place. And then once you get it all in there properly, it'll all just push right in, just like that. And then you're going to reach underneath, grabbing that belt. We're going to get it around the motor here, around that pulley. Give it a good spin. Make sure we're in between those pulleys. And then now we're going to look that we're spinning the head clockwise. Our tail should be spinning counterclockwise. So now we know we have the proper belt tension or belt direction and then we'll just pull the belt back a little bit and we'll use our tensioning tool now to actual right, tension so now we're going to go ahead and tension the tail belt so you need your your belt tensioner which is this little guy here and you need a two millimeter driver so you're just going to open this guy up and you're going to close it around your boom now you want this little part here that's going to push against it to go against the boom block itself so just go ahead and make sure that that is adjusted to where it is pushing onto there. Take your two millimeter driver, screw that screw all the way down and tighten the tensioner up. And then you are going to make sure that your bolt is through here to hold the tensioner out of the way, the belt. And then go ahead and use your two millimeter driver and just turn this in and do this until you get the desired belt tension. Make sure that your two clamps are loose, bolt screws, and then feel the tension. So I can already feel right now it's super loose. And I'm gonna go off a of feel here. That feels good right there. So I'm happy with that. So then I'm gonna come through here. I'm going to lock these two down now. This one and the one through this hole right here, which is going to be that guy right there. Tighten that one down. Now, once you're happy with your belt tension, everything feels good, you go ahead, pull that, your tensioner is there, and you go ahead and remove the boom clamp and your belt right, is So now tension. we can finish up the tail push rod itself. So you're just gonna grab your ends and you're going to start them by hand get them started and then if you have one of these guys from another sab build it'll make your life a lot easier go ahead and spin them all the way down you're going to go for an overall diameter of 515 millimeters so i would recommend going about halfway and then do the same on the other side. Once you get an overall diameter from end to end, then we can mount the push. Right, so we went ahead, got our ends on both sides and we are ready to install the push rod. Now I went ahead and put the tail blades on for this because like all my setups, you know me, you'll hear me talk about 
proper tail setup. So we're gonna go ahead and fold these tail blades in towards the nose of the helicopter so we can see it direct from the top view. Right now we know that we are at zero pitch. So this would be zero stick. We know that our tail servo itself is centered and at 90 degrees neutral. Hard to see, but I know it's at 90 degrees. So now we know we're gonna go ahead and we are going to clip our push rod onto the rudder servo. So we have our push rod clipped onto the rudder servo and our rudder servo is 90 degrees and centered. So now we are going to go ahead and adjust our tail setup. So that way we have two to four degrees of right pitch. So we want this top blade away from the helicopter and we want this bottom blade towards the helicopter. And we're gonna set it to it's about right there. So we are going to put this push rod up and see where we're at. And that is almost perfect just by me eyeballing it. So I need to adjust one turn because we need the SAB facing out. I'm gonna push that up there, look at it from the top. I am happy with that. So I will take my ball link pliers and I will put my push rod on. I'm going to center my servo again to make sure that that is correct. So now my tail servo is 100% 90 degrees and I have about two to four degrees of right rudder. So now my tail is properly set up. Again, you want this top blade away from the helicopter, bottom blade towards the boom. So that would be neutral. Ours is right there. I know I have a proper tail set up and now we can move on. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and end part two off here. We are waiting on a couple of parts to come in the mail, a couple things before we can finish up this build, but we are so close. We have it on its skids. It looks so good. Really, really liking the 420, the design of it, everything. So simple yet strong. Really liking the direct drive, one-way bearing. It all just goes together so fast. A very little part count too. This whole transmission motor mount assembly plate here. Awesome job to SAB there. So I'm going to end part two off here. I want to thank each and every one of you guys so much for watching. Give this video a like, subscribe, take care, and have a great day.